In this video, we are going to discuss about an interesting price park future, which is one of the most popular interview question. So this question is specifically related to Delta table. So we all know that Delta Lake table has really become popular recently and most of the companies who are building their cloud-based data platform is leveraging Delta tables for performing their big data analytical workloads. So the reason why Delta Lake table is really popular is, firstly, if you're not aware of this, Databricks is the one who created it and made it as an open source system. So for this reason, if you're using Delta tables inside Azure Databricks, it would be really optimized and efficient. Also, it comes with different features such as ability to time travel, support schema evolution, inbuilt asset properties, and several others. So because of this popularity and various features, there will be more number of questions related to Delta table that can be asked in your interview. So in this video, we are going to discuss one important interview question about that. So let's get started. As you can see here, I'm inside the Azure Databricks workspace. So before seeing about the question itself, Let's first look into some of the code setup that's required for this interview question. Here as usual, we are going to use a sample data frame for this interview question. So firstly, let's run this code to create the sample data frame. So this is just a simple data frame which contains information about the employee. So the name for this data frame is employee underscore df. So now let's display this data frame to see how the data frame looks like. As you can see here, it's a very simple data frame which contains just four rows and three columns such as name, department, and salary. Okay, now if you want to use this data frame to create a Delta table, you can do it in two ways. Either by default, you can store it in Databricks Hive Metastore managed location, or you can save it in the Unity catalog, which is the latest data governance solution of Databricks. So here in the bottom, I have a code to create the Delta table inside the default Hive Metastore location. In this code, firstly, we are creating a schema called Dev Schema. And after that, we are using our employee underscore DF data frame to create a Delta table inside the Dev Schema that we are creating. And the table name is given as employee. Cool, so let's run the cell now. After this run is successful, we'll be creating the data frame as a Delta table with the name employee. Nice, as you can see here, our code has run successfully. So let's check if the table has been created successfully or not. So for that, in a separate tab, I have opened the Catalog Explorer. As you can see here, we have the Hive Meta Store with the default schema over here. So let's refresh this page now. As you can see here, we have our dev schema that we created. And if I expand the schema, we can find our employee table over here. So let's click on this employee table. So here you can see all the information about the employee table, such as the column information, data type information, etc. And if I click on the sample data, you can see the actual data which the table holds. So this is the Delta table that we created in this Hive Meta store. Okay, now let's go to the notebook again to discuss the actual interview question. The question would be something like this. How would you create a Delta table with the friendly column names? What I mean by friendly column names is, for example, column name which contains space, special characters, etc. Also, you might get a question like, do Delta table allows this? If is, how can you do it? Or is there any other way to achieve this? So these kinds of questions would be usually asked in your interview. So before discussing about why we need to create the tables with the friendly column names in the first place, Let's see if we can create the Delta table or not. So in the bottom, I have a code to create another data frame which contains the same employee data, but the only difference this time is the column names have been changed to the friendly names. For example, instead of name, I have name of the employee, and then the employee's department and employee's salary. So let's run the cell now. As you can see here, we have created the data frame successfully with the name employee new DF. Let's display the data frame to see how it looks like. Nice, we have created the new data frame with a friendly name. So these column names have spaces and symbols, which is not the usual way to create the tables, right? Now let's discuss what's the need to create the column names like this in the first place. The main reason for this is, it would be really useful for the reporting purpose. We all know that the tables we create using the data engineering process would be finally used in some sort of the reporting tool to create dashboards, right? Say for example, 
In another tab, I have an existing Power BI report over here. So in this report, if you look into this particular visual, we have used a column name called date published for creating this visual. So by default, whenever you use a column for creating a visual, the same column name would be used as a title for the visual. But oftentimes, there will be requirements to change this title in a more meaningful way. Say for example, instead of date published, we may need to keep it as published space date. So that is really readable for the business users. So in this case, most of the time, we would be manually renaming the visual title from the Power BI end. So if you are using the same date published column to create multiple visuals in the report, you may end up in renaming in all the visuals, which is quite time consuming and tedious. Another main reason is, if any business user is looking into the table directly, there can be a situation where they can't understand the data with the standard column names. So instead, if we have the table names with friendly column names, this would give more context and information, which helps in building the reports and also for the end users. So that's the reason this is one of the most common requirements for most of the organization. Okay, now let's jump back to the notebook. And here we have our new data frame, which is employee new DF. Now what we can do is, similar to how we created the Delta table using the existing data frame, let's try to use the same code to create the Delta table with the new data frame. As you can see here, I'm using our new data frame and creating it as a Delta table inside the same dev schema, but with a new table name called employee underscore new. So let's run the cell now. Okay, as you can see here, we are getting an error. The error message is, found invalid characters among, and then these are the characters which is not supported, which also includes the space. So basically, by default, the Delta table does not allow you to create columns with space and these special characters. So although you are able to create a data frame with these column names, when you try to create it as a Delta table, the code would fail. So this is the interview question, and you need to answer how to handle the situation. So let's see how we can answer this better. So this can be handled in two ways. So we are going to discuss both ways in this video. And finally, we will also see which one is the best way to go for. So the first way is, we already have a Delta table called employee, which we have created earlier, right? So here, the only requirement now is, instead of having these standard column names, we need to have a meaningful names. So in the first way, instead of creating a Delta table with the friendly column names, we can create a new view based on the already existing Delta table. And in the new view, we can change the column names to the friendly one as per our requirements. We can pretty much use any column names in the views and we don't have any restrictions for it. So when you create a view with the friendly name based on the Delta table, then you can use the view to create the reports instead of the Delta table since the data would be exactly the same and the only thing will change is the column names. So this would be the first approach. Say for example, I'll go to the notebook again and here if I scroll down, I have a code to create a new view based on the existing Delta table. As you can see here, we are creating the view based on the employee table and the only thing that we are going to do here is updating all the column names to the friendly ones. So when you mention the column names with space or special characters while creating the views, you may need to enclose it using the backtick symbol similar to this. So these column names are the same ones that we used to create the new employee data frame over here. And we were unable to create the Delta table with these column names. And now we are trying to use the same column names to create a view instead based on the existing Delta table. So this view will be created in the same dev schema and the view name would be employee underscore view. Okay, let's run the cell now. Cool, we have successfully executed the code. Now let's go to the catalog explorer to see if the view is created or not. Okay, let's refresh this page and after refreshing, you can find the employee view that we created. Here in the view, you can see the definition, which basically the same code that we used in the notebook. So this view is just using the same data of the employee Delta table. The only difference is all the column names have been changed to the friendly column names. And now 
This view can be used in the Power BI report to create visuals instead of the delta table. So we were able to update the columns to a friendly name only because this is a view, whereas the employee table is a managed delta table. And by default, the delta table does not support columns that have space and other special characters. So this is the first approach to handle this problem, which is by creating views instead of actually changing the column names in the delta table. Okay, now let's discuss about the second approach to handle this problem. There is a new way to actually update the column names to a friendly name in the delta table itself. So this is not a default behavior and it was not supported earlier. Recently, Databricks have given an update which made this possible. So let's see how we can do that. If I scroll down, as you can see here, we have a feature called name mapping. So when you enable this feature while creating the delta table, you'll be able to create columns with spaces and other special characters which was not supported earlier. So basically to enable this, we need to just add this code segment while creating our delta table. So what does the column mapping means is, here in the new tab, I have opened an official documentation of Microsoft. So basically, when you enable the column mapping feature to the delta table, you can perform multiple things like renaming the columns to a friendly name, dropping the columns and several other features. So let's discuss how this column mapping feature works. So basically, when you enable this to a delta table, any sort of the column name changes will be only done in the metadata level rather than in the actual data files. So this allows us to change column names as per our requirements. Also one important thing to note here is, there can be few limitations when you enable this feature. For example, this works only on 10.4 LTS Databricks runtime and above. And also there are few limitations on the change data feed and also while working with streaming data. So we need to keep this in mind before using this feature. So now in the notebook, we have our code which enables the column mappings. And here we are using the new employee data frame which contains the friendly columns and we are creating the delta table in the same dev schema and the table name is employee underscore new. So let's run this cell and see if we can create a delta table with the friendly names or not. Nice, as you can see here, we did not get any error message and the code was run successfully. So let's go to the catalog explorer to check the delta table. Here, let's refresh the page and expand the dev schema. Nice, as you can see here, we have our employee underscore new delta table and here you can see all the friendly columns that we created. And if I go to the details tab, you can clearly see this is a managed delta table. And if you notice something here, you'll be seeing a lot of additional delta properties related to the column mappings, which is associated with this delta table. Okay, now we have seen the second approach to handle this problem, which is creating the friendly column name directly in the delta table using the latest column mapping feature. Whereas in the first approach, we created a view based on a delta table and have just updated the column names in the view instead of the delta table itself. So these are the two approaches. And now finally, let's talk about which is the better one and what approach should we use in what situation. The best and the short answer for this would be, if you already have the huge number of delta table in your existing system and you're looking for updating the column names for any of your existing delta table, then you may need to probably go for the first approach, which is creating the views. So the reason for this is, in the first approach, we'll not be changing anything in the delta table. Instead, we just do it in the views. So this will make sure that all your existing pipelines that feeds the data would work without any issues in terms of schema changes and data quality. On the other hand, if you are creating a new delta table with the friendly column names, then you can probably go for the second approach, which is enabling the column mapping feature in your delta table. Also while using this, we need to make sure all the limitations that we discussed earlier does not affect your system. So this is the two approach and I hope now you have a clear understanding of how to create a delta table with the friendly column names. So if you found this video useful, please like, share and subscribe. So that's it for today. See you in another great video. Until then, cheers. Bye.